Hi there. Today I want to tell you the story of the samurai crab. This is a samurai crab. And some people think that the marks on the back of the samurai crab look like the marks on the face of a samurai or an ancient Japanese warrior. And in this story, I want to tell you how the samurai crab got its face on its back. It all starts in a battle, the Battle of Dananora, which took place on April 24th, 1185. Dananora is in Japan. It's a place in Japan where the battle took place. And in 1185, the Japanese emperor was a seven-year-old boy. His name was Antoko. He lived with his grandmother. Her name was Tokiko Taira. And the two of them together led the entire Jap Japanese clan, and they were called the Haiki. The Minamoto clan fought to gain control of the throne in Japan. They didn't want the Haiki clan to be in charge anymore. This was called the Genpai War, and it took place from 1180 to 1185. This particular battle, the Battle of Dononora, took place right here in between these two pieces of land in this strait, and the strait was called Dononora. So the Minamoto people are represented by these white boats down here, and the Haiki people are represented by the red boats. And you can see the Haikis were terribly outnumbered during this battle. The Haiki warriors were the ones that were called samurai, and this is kind of an idea of what they looked like. The Haiki had ruled Japan for many decades, but now they were terribly outnumbered, and they were about to lose the battle at the hands of the Minamoto. Now, the grandmother didn't want Antoko to be captured by the Minamoto, so she took him off the boat and plunged him into the water, and, they, and she drowned him. All the other Haiki warriors, all the other samurai, were so upset that they had seen the grandmother kill Antoko that they jumped into the water also, and they also died. According to Japanese folklore, Samurai crabs contain the souls of the Haiki samurai warriors who died in the Battle of Dananora. What do you think? Does this crab resemble the samurai soldiers? Does it resemble them because they're the, it's the reincarn reincarnation of the dead samurai, or did something else happen? If they're not the reincarnated samurai, then why do they look like this? Here's one explanation. To this day, every year on the 24th of April, their descendants proceed to the Akama Shrine, which contains the mausoleum of the drowned seven-year-old emperor, Antoku. There, they conduct a ceremony of remembrance for the life and death of the Heiki warriors. But there's a strange postscript to this story. The fishermen say that the Heiki samurai wander the bottom of the inland sea still in the form of crabs. There are crabs to be found here which have curious markings on their backs, patterns which resemble a human face with the aggressive scowl of a samurai warrior from medieval Japan. These Heiki crabs, when caught, are not eaten. They're thrown back into the sea in commemoration of the doleful events of the Battle of Dano Ura. This legend raises a lovely problem. How does it come about? that the face of a warrior is cut on the carapace of a Japanese crab. How could it be? The answer seems to be that humans made this face. But how? Like many other features, the patterns on the back or carapace of this crab are inherited. But among crabs, as among humans, there are many different hereditary lines. Now, suppose purely by chance, among the distant ancestors of this crab, they came to be one which looked just a little bit 
looked like a human face. Long before the battle, fishermen may have been reluctant to eat a crab with a human face. In throwing it back into the sea, they were setting into motion a process of selection. If you're a crab and your carapace is just ordinary, the humans are going to eat you. But if it looks a little bit like a face, they'll throw you back and you'll be able to have lots of nice little baby crabs that all look just like you. As many generations passed of crabs and fisher folk alike, the crabs with patterns that look most like a samurai face preferentially survived. Until eventually, there was produced not just a human face, not just a Japanese face, but the face of a samurai warrior. All this has nothing to do with what the crabs might want. Selection is imposed from the outside. The more you look like a samurai, the better your chances of survival. Eventually, there are a lot of crabs that look like samurai warriors. So I guess it's possible that these crabs resemble the samurai because they actually inhabit the ghosts of the samurai. But doesn't it make a little bit more sense that they coincidentally resemble the samurai and therefore fishermen are a little superstitious about throwing them back? Here's another story. It's the story of the peppered moth. Hopefully you have the worksheet that contains an outline of this story and you can fill in the worksheet while you're watching the story. If not, you can stop the video right now and you can go download the worksheet from the homework website so that you can fill it in as I'm talking about it. You can pause the video now if you need to. Once upon a time, there was a species of moth called the peppered moths. The moths lived in England. They flew around and they did moth things all day, whatever it is that moths do. Now, of course, just like every species, moths have predators. The species that are predators of the peppered moths are birds. And enough new baby peppered moths were born every year that the birds didn't eat all of them. The birds only ate some of them. So the population of the peppered moths was pretty stable. As it turns out, purely by coincidence, there was a mutation in the peppered moths, and some of them were light colored, and some of them were dark colored. But for a long time, they lived happily together in England, the light ones and the dark ones, same species. Light ones and dark ones could have babies together, and they would have some babies that were light and some babies that were dark, and it was all perfectly fine. Until the Industrial Revolution. You might have heard about the Industrial Revolution. That's when humans invented machinery. Machinery produces soot. Soot is that black, um, sticky, smoky powder that maybe you've seen around fireplaces that haven't been cleaned or around burnt food. That's soot. Machinery produces soot. And it turned out that the soot stuck to everything. It stuck to buildings. This building in the, in the middle here has been covered by soot. The building on the left and the building on the right have been cleaned, but this one in the middle, middle is covered by soot. Well, the soot clung to trees and it clung to buildings back at the beginning of our story in the Industrial Revolution. And the birds found it very easy to eat the light colored moths, because look, in this picture here, there's a light moth up here. Can you see the dark moth down here? We call that camouflage, right? But the birds had a really hard time finding the dark colored peppered moths. The dark colored peppered moths were camouflaged, so the birds didn't eat them, so they were able to survive. The light colored moths were easily seen by the birds, so they all died. This is kind of a graph that shows the population of peppered moths. Here we have the light colored moths and the dark colored moths pretty even. And then at the Industrial Revolution, the dark moths went way, way up here. 
and the light colored moths, they dropped way, way down. There were still some light colored moths, but most of the moths after the Industrial Revolution were dark colored. And then one day, humans decided to clean the buildings. They found cleaner ways to make things from their factories, so not as much soot was produced as well. And then after the cleanup, you can see these guys are cleaning this building. The buildings in England went back to being light colored again. So what do you think happened? The birds only really ate the dark colored peppered moths because against the light buildings, the dark colored pepper moths kind of stood out. But the light colored pepper moths, and maybe you can see one down here where I've circled it in red, the light colored ones were better camouflaged. So the dark ones all died now and the light ones all survived. Now, when they cleaned the buildings right here, you can see the number of light pepper moths goes way, way up and the number of dark peppered moths goes way, way down because the buildings are all light. After the cleanup, most of the peppered moths that they found were light colored peppered moths. And that's my story.